He's our foremost graphic artist, as any fool know, that's F-U-L-E, K-N-O. Ronald Searle, the illustrator of Molesworth and creator of St. Trinian's, is 90 tomorrow. In a long and industrious career, he's influenced generations of cartoonists and animators. An exhibition celebrating his comic and reportage work opens tomorrow at the Cartoon Museum in London. He's given his first television interview in 35 years to our arts correspondent, Nicholas Glass, who joined him for a glass of bubbly in the south of France. Excuse me, I'm going to indulge. Ronald Searle calls champagne his engine oil, and why not too? He's got much to celebrate. That illiterate prep school boy, Nigel Molesworth, no less. And the bolshie bells of St. Trinian's, Anarchy Unleashed. Searle sold his first cartoon at 15. 75 years later, he's still working at his home in Provence, surrounded by his pencil and brushes and a drawer full of Mont Blancs. Are you proud of some things more than others? Not exhausted. The thing that I look at when I see my work is, oh, oh, did I do all that? <laughs> As I said, those kilometres of line and uh, all the work that was done in those years. I must have been a maniac. Searle has worked for Granter, Punch, Life, The New Yorker and Le Monde. At the last count, he'd illustrated 115 books. He's more fated abroad than he is at home. The Légion d'honneur from the French, special gong from the Germans, and the Americans have twice given him their top cartoonist award. He is by a mile uh, you know, our, our greatest living cartoonist. There's no, there's no, there's no two ways. Well. I think it, most people would agree on that. Everybody I can think of pretty well in this country certainly has been influenced in some way or other by Searle. He has he's, he's got an amazing breadth, amazing wide range from just purely comic through to um, savagely satirical through to straightforward um, clear-eyed reporting. Ronald Searle's experiences as a prisoner of war transformed him as an artist. He was 21 when Singapore fell to the Japanese. Suddenly, you lose your liberty and uh, you want to record, if possible, what's going on because there are no cameras. And s suddenly, you're given a purpose. I said to myself, you are going to be an unofficial war artist. And I spent my next four years recording as best I could everything that happened in the prison and in the jungle. Where did you get your materials? Oh, odds and ends. Everyone had a bit of pencil. Every book had a fly page. Uh, 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 the prison itself there were millions of pieces of paper that were scattered everywhere. Did the people in the camp know that Sapper Searle wanted paper? Yes, because I exchanged it for a cigarette. <clears throat> and I managed to get cigarettes by selling drawings. <laughs> it was a vicious circle. <laughs> the self-portrait. Yes. Which is moving when, you know, when I see you in front of me now and I see you then. Mm. Do you remember the moment of drawing it? Was there a mirror to look at? I had a tiny piece of mirror. Just, just a, a piece of broken mirror, which every soldier had a piece of something uh, to shave in. Because our officers were around and they would not let us deteriorate. And we had to shave. And I had my little mirror and so I shaved in. But I also used this to see what I look like. It's a mess. <laughs> There's a corner cut out of it. A room, yeah, well, I smoked that. Yes. <laughs> for seven months, for 16 hours a day, Ronald Sir was among the POWs who worked on the Siam Burma Railway. He was part of a rock-breaking team, hacking away through a granite mountain. One didn't think it was a railway. It was just murder. Did you ever ask yourself, why me? Why did I survive? No. 
no, no, you're, you're, with, you're with other people doing the same thing. You don't select yourself. Uh, I, in my mind, I was very positive. Um, <clears throat> I was so sure the drawings I, would, I was doing would, would actually um, come back one day. But if not, they would be found by someone. And at that point, we paused and topped up our glasses. I don't think I've done an interview like this before. We moved on to lighter stuff, to the work that's best known and best loved. The only way of working, actually. Ronald Searle regards St. Trinian's as just a single chapter in a long working life. He drew this cartoon as a prisoner of war. Hand up the girl who bent down the east wing last night. The Trinian stuff came up quite accidentally. They, they got published. It only lasted six years. My principle has always been the moment it's successful, kill it. Because uh, it can only get worse. But basically, I was more interested in illustration and reportage. The trial of the Nazi Adolf Eichmann in Jerusalem in 1961. Ronald Searle spent a month in court making drawings for Life magazine. He was a triviality. It's very odd. This little man uh, saying all the time, I was only carrying out orders. I'm only a, f a functionary, you know. I just carry out orders. And uh, this uh, 15,000 will be executed tomorrow. To him it meant nothing at all. Of course, the British still feel safer with the comic appeal of Nigel Molesworth and his prep school St. Custard's a glorious collaboration with the writer Geoffrey Willans. It was uh, a potpourri of ideas between Searle and Willans that actually made um, a book, and it dribbled on. People like it. They still like it, curiously enough. I was going to say, do you have an explanation? Well, not really, because, in fact, th those days have gone. But there's, a, there's a, a basic public that still run around crying, um, as every fool know. Oh, hello clouds, hello sky. I don't know, it's a sort of cult thing. Ronald Searle has long regarded himself as a European. He and his wife Monica have lived in France since the 1960s. The Searle archive is being left to a German museum in Hanover. How important has champagne been in your life? Well, very important, really, because um, I love champagne. When you're working and you have a glass of champagne, the bubbles start giving you ideas, you know. Ronald and Monica Searle will be toasting his 90th birthday tomorrow with their usual tipple. Nicholas Glass with Ronald Searle, aged 90, tomorrow. The theme, the audience, the locations and how long they'll get to speak, the rules for the first ever televised debates between the party leaders have been revealed.